Bless your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them, he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Here are three nativities from your homes. And in one of them, you can see the teeny tiny Christmas tree that was in your Christmas envelopes. Our first lesson today will be read by Scott Menard. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Some more beautiful pictures of our Christmas. And our canticle this morning will be sung by me as soon as the dogs get in. Or I'll just start. The ransomed of God shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong and do not fear. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and I am on the wrong verse. Here is your God coming with judgment to save you. Then 
shall the eyes of the blind be open, and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless shall sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground shall be springs of water. The ransomed of God shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And I have to add an extra verse. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The ransomed of God shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their hands. Keep sending in those photos. And now you just learned that Anglican chant is a flexible beast. Our second lesson will be read by Paul Vokes. There. A reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all. 
by their names. Good morning. It's a joy to see you on this first Sunday after Christmas. And if you're joining us on Facebook, Kevin Criley is your host over there. I forgot to welcome, uh, welcome you a while ago at the early part of the service. It's a little bit busy here. It's been my habit for, I think, two decades that we don't, uh, we don't ask someone, a clergy person, to preach on the Sunday after Christmas, and we've read a story, uh, a great Christmas story. We've had some marvelous readings, uh, most often by Doug Berger, uh, not always, with some beautiful Christmas stories. And the reason being for that is I really believe that um, because the Sunday after Christmas is usually the Sunday for associates, and curates and junior clergy, but I actually think everyone needs a chance to rest at Christmas and especially this year. But that was when, of course, when church was a little bit more predictable and it was easy for us to kind of roll out of bed and show up and sing Christmas carols and, and do the Christmas service. Now, when I have preached on the Sunday after Christmas, because of course I have, and I sort of am right now, I always go back to one of my earliest uh, times. It is, to me, a little bit silly, not silly, maybe humbling or terrifying or both, to imagine that we clergy could come up with something that would match in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being and the word became flesh and lived among us. What might we possibly add to that? So one of my first sermons on this gospel, I remembered, thanks be to God, my grandmother, Mary Maud Delano Muller. And I inherited her recipe box. I inherited, thanks be to God, the recipe boxes of both of my grandmothers. Uh, and in that recipe box is a recipe for black beans from my grandmother. It's very simple, uh, beans, onions, a few other things, cook. And then it's uh, typewritten, a manual typewriter on a three by five index card. And you finish the recipe and there's a, a sentence that continues on to the back of the card. And on the back of the card, it says in all capitals letter in that just to me, beautiful manual typewriter typeface says she typed, uh, she typed three words. There she is. It's just black beans and yet so marvelous. So simple, so beautiful, so good, so nourishing so glorious, there she is. And for me, that is a little bit what the first Sunday of Christmas is because it is, it is the, the magnanimity of God come into human form, inhabiting our lives in this way that we cannot understand. Now, Here's what happened. So, of course, in Zoom worship, I could show you that recipe card. I could, like, I could wave it around if we were in church, but it's small and insignificant. But here I could snap a picture and show it to you. So I went to look for it last night and I couldn't find it. I looked in both the recipe boxes I have, and then I have this terrible habit of tucking recipes I love in 
between the pages of some cookbooks. So I looked through all my cookbooks. And lo and behold, as I took this journey through uh, my cookbooks, all of a sudden, all my humanity, my, my longings, things I want and wanted to cook for people, things I wish I had learned how to cook, meals I, I had provided, joyful things I've celebrated, histories of recipes and, uh, and uh, all my failures as a cook sometimes to provide what I think is what my family should be eating regularly. All of a sudden, all of my humanity was right there. All the failures, all the successes, the hopes, the longings. And I was just looking for a little recipe card to share with you. The thing about Christmas, the incarnation, that's what season this is, the enfleshment of God. The thing about Christmas is simply this. God accepted all that all my miserable burned pot bottom failure recipes and the marvelous feasts I have placed before people from time to time and everything in between. There she is. Jim Griffiths, who taught liturgics at Neshota House for years and later in life at my seminary had this most beautiful line. He said, it is nothing more and nothing less than God. Your life breathed into by the spirit is nothing more and nothing less than what God has for you. And so this first Sunday of Christmas gives us this opportunity to simply inhabit our lives. If you got some Sabbath rest, and I hope you did, I did, we did. If you got some Sabbath rest, I hope you had a chance to wonder about the fullness of your humanity, failures and successes and longings. It is, this Corona Tide is that kind of season because it makes us look at things that really matter and things that maybe don't matter so much anymore. <laughs> there she is, nothing more, nothing less than God. So there are a couple of other things I want to uh, address this morning. And then I have a video to share with you from uh, Harry and Ellie Pullman that I'm really excited about. But first, I want to talk about our Christmas Eve observance here at St. Aidan's um, because it was the most, uh, most wonderful and strange and awful experience for me. And if you're willing, uh, no matter how you observed Christmas Eve, whether you uh, watched online or didn't, whether you came in person, whether you worshiped with the National Cathedral or something like that, I really would love to know what you did. Uh, so shoot me an email. And I want to tell you about uh, what, some of, what some of our folks gave to make this happen. So uh, there were about, about 15 people involved who were outside all the time. The wise, the wise men, the magi, the kings were uh, Nancy Peter and Charlie Martin and Durango Jenkins. And then uh, there were some shepherds hanging around. That was Tom and Jackie Sturm who were welcoming you. Um, half of the Zarsky family were shepherds. Half of the Zarsky family were angels. Sarah Soki was a shepherd uh, watching, over, watching over the stable. So was Pastor Zach Paris. Um, there was this marvelous angel uh, lit up on the roof for most of the evening. That was Sai Sokolov with a sign, a light up sign that said, don't be afraid. The most important words of the night, don't be afraid. Meanwhile, the Sokolovs were actually uh, in their RV in another parking lot, uh, babysitting the new puppy that we have. 
everything was taken care of. The CU police helped us with traffic. I was grateful for that partnership. And then in the chapel, Sarah Parkinson, uh, as we had previously agreed, uh, put together a marvelous music program uh, that Wes played. We had two vocalists that happened to be married to each other, which matters for our corona precautions. A cellist, a sound technician named Noah Young, who was a gift, and Kim Keffler, uh, almost with zero notice, figured out how to make this go live on YouTube. And I know many of you watched it there. We have some pictures about that. Our uh, Father Steve Wingrovius and Father Max Bailey uh, were distributing communion in the parking lot. I did communion a little bit, but I was occupied with other things. It was wonderful. And here's the funny thing, none of those people could hear any of the marvelous stuff that was happening in the chapel, because we were only hearing it on car radios. It was such a disjointed thing for me. We broadcast a short worship service for about 20 minutes, right at six o'clock. I know many of you uh, came for that and sat in your cars and listened, uh, because I heard you honk when I asked you to honk. It was the most uh, disjointed and a strange thing. And so then, of course, I would walk around to the back of the church where we had our stable built by Father Steve Wingrovius. Thank you, Steve. I will always be grateful for that. And then inside the stable were Jenny and Alexis Garcia and baby Owen. And so I turned the corner uh, partway through the evening and I thought, huh, it's not much of a nativity. It's just this little family with a baby. And there you go, nothing more and nothing less than God. Just this little family with a baby out behind a building. God is with us. God is with us. Amen. If you'll give me a moment to queue up a video, I will get that ready because this is more of the Christmas story for what happened at St. Aidan's on Christmas Eve. And here we go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> we are very happy that Mother Mary Kate has given us the opportunity to contribute these permanent lights to St. Aidan's in memory of our son, Eric. Our family has had many close connections with and fond memories of St. Aidan's, starting with Father Pat and Virginia Patterson and extending all the way to Mother Mary Kate. These included the usual church services and festivities, plus weddings, funerals, and summer church school events, such as Eric's week-long bicycle trek with fellow parishioners, usually only teenagers. Uh, many uh, going uh, for a long time over many Colorado mountains. An interesting recent coincidence is that Somerset McCarthy's electric for, uh, electrical firm installed the, these new lights that we are bringing out. We first met the McCarty family when the two families were parishioners at St. Aidan's and our children were at Peter Pan Preschool. Jackie McCarty and I were uh, both pregnant at the time and swapped many tales at our pregnancies uh, progressed and got to know each other very well. Eric loved St. Aidan's and looked forward to attending services when he was home from his undergrad school, his studies in England, his law school, 
and his eventual home with his wife and family in Vermont. As a medieval and Renaissance history major, as was I, Eric and I both loved chatting together with Doug Berger. We strongly feel that St. Aidan's is a bright beacon in this time of national and world darkness. And as Christ wants us to do, is providing real help to many groups of people, both those who are obviously in need and those who are not so obviously in need. We feel these joyous lights envisioned by Mary Kate are a permanent, tangible display of St. Aidan's mission. And we're glad we're in a position to make them available to the St. Aidan's family and the Boulder community. We know that Eric is looking down at us and these lights at St. Aidan's with joy and happiness and love for us all. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy New, New Year, Year to, to you all. all. So I forgot to show just a couple of pictures of that night. Uh, this is what Christmas during Corona Tide looks like. So this is what was going on in the chapel and our filming station. Me preaching in a mask. Sarah took that picture. And this is that broadcast happening uh, and being watched in South Dakota by Andy Shaw. That's on YouTube. And there it is, just a little family with a baby. And what a gift the Garcia family gave to us. Uh, they were out there for the full two hours in the cold. So um, I'm really grateful uh, for that and for all of the work that so many people did. Many people have thanked me. I want to thank those people who made this happen. So I do now have a couple of announcements. Um, we're having another Christmas carol sing led by Audrey Peterbark. It's by Zoom on December 30th, 6 p.m., less than an hour. And it was great just to sing together and hear a little bit about some favorite hymns. Uh, our friends from St. Luke's Denver joined us. Uh, Audrey is a, is a great musician and, um, and can uh, lead us well even by Zoom. Uh, so join us if you'd like, and the email will have links for that. And our usual reminder that if you have donations that you want recorded in 2020, they need to be either brought to the church mail to the church. Um, the office will be open on Tuesday this week and Thursday this week, and um, or postmarked December 30th, 31st. We can't count them in 2020 unless they're postmarked that way. Um, so I think you can get ready to uh, unmute yourself. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Enjoy. Peace be with you. Peace be with us. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you.
Oh, uh, Sarah, what is that animal? There's baby Jesus. Oh, oh baby Jesus. Jesus. Oh. He's so cute. Oh. He's so oh. cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. Wow. Harry and Ellie. Thank, oh, you, Harry and Ellie. Thank, you. Thank you, Harry and Ellie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Both Night of, of the world. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I wish I wish you all had been able to see the size of the. the oh, um, sure. There's uh, Carol. <laughs> there's Carol and Paul. Hi. Carol. <laughs> Carol. Paul. <laughs> I wish you had been able to see the size of the truck that came in to put the um, to put the lights on the church. It was awesome. Uh, so <laughs> what a joy! And we'll leave them up for as long as we can. Thank you. So during the offertory, Wes will be playing another familiar Christmas hymn. continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.